Okay, so, so for those of us who um, just need a little bit more explanation, what is X and what are moonshots? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we're called X. We used to be called Google X, but then we spun out of uh, Google a couple of years ago. So we're still part of the wider Alphabet group. And we call ourselves a moonshot factory. So that means we work on projects that would solve very large problems in the world with the help of technology. And that sort of begs the question of what's a moonshot, right? Um, so a moonshot to us has three elements. So the first part is a very large problem in the world that affects millions or even billions of people. Then we propose a radical solution. Sounds like science fiction today, but we think that there's a breakthrough tech um, on the horizon, and by that I mean maybe five or ten years, so that we can turn that science fiction into a reality. So that's the kind of projects that we like to work on. Okay, so like a, a good moonshot versus a bad moonshot. <laughs> Give us examples. Um, do you mean Are there bad moonshots? The Are there any bad moonshots? There's lots of bad moonshots ideas, and that's actually what we played this morning. We played this card game where we gave everyone a random problem and a random technology, and we asked them to come up with a radical solution. It, it led to lots of And by of random solutions. technology, she means like sharks with lasers and <laughs> things like that. It was serious ones like you know solar panels, but there was also sharks with lasers in their head. Um, <laughs> my favorite one was, uh, magazines featuring egotistical men on their front cover. <laughs> we would never do that. Um, but, okay, but no, but what are the, what's the criteria for a moonshot? For a real moonshot? Yes. Um, so the first criterion is, um, will it solve a real problem in the world? Um, so by pr the, the kind of problems that we look at, uh, transportation was the first one. So self-driving cars was the project that founded the group. Mm -hmm. um, many people still die on the road, and it's usually because of driver error. Over 90% of accidents are caused because the driver isn't paying attention. So the radical um, solution was, what if we just take the driver out of the car? And that was certainly science fiction for the 20th century and even early in this century, but now the technology is coming together that enables us to do that. So we just had our first autonomous um, drives with real customers in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so that's really exciting because something that sounded completely crazy and unfeasible even five years ago is, is becoming reality in our lifetime. Um, another problem we're wor look, working on is um, internet connectivity. More than half the world still doesn't have internet access. We know that all sorts of interesting and positive things happen. You know, small businesses grow, country GDP grows, people have access to education, to health, um, etc. cetera. Um, but it's very expensive to put cell towers everywhere. So the radical solution was, what if we put those cell towers in the sky and have a floating network of stratospheric balloons um, to serve people? Makes sense. Um, <laughs> so, so moonshot projects coming out of yeah no totally um, moonshot projects coming out of X basically have like two potential fates two potential outcomes which is they get killed or they get spun out so how do you decide when to go with either of those options at which point do you like just throw in the towel or say okay you're ready yeah it's a really good question so we are an R and D. Um, lab at the end of the day. So when a project gets to the point where it's ready to be commercialized, um, which usually involves partners in the very industry that we're working in, so um, for instance, Telefonica or AT&T for um, no, our partners for, AT uh, for Project Loon, um, that's the point when they get ready to graduate from X. So Loon is still inside X, you know, but it's sort of getting to that point of maturity. Um, we want we keep them inside while it's still not clear whether it's going to work or not, right? When, it's a, when it sort of changes from this question like, is this ever going to work, to when and how and with whom are we going to take this to market, you know, that's when they graduate. So Waymo is the company that graduated from X that now is taking self-driving cars to market. Um, along the, the path to that, of course, is, is littered with many pivots and many failures. So that could be small failures like, we're trying out a particular feature and it just doesn't work, um, to like the entire project turns out not to be working. And sometimes that's for technology reasons where we literally cannot make the tech work, but it, quite often it's also economic reasons that we sort of realize somewhere along the way that this will never become a real product and it will never become a, a real business. I found that 
setting those criteria up front can be really helpful. So not just knowing what success looks like, but also knowing like when do we think it's time to pull the plug on this project can, can be incredibly helpful. So I call that kill criteria. <laughs> why, um, why does Alphabet, your parent company, even do this? I mean, you, you, you guys, you, ser seriously, like what's the, why do you exist? Why does X exist? Um, <laughs> you, you guys brought in Alphabet, brought in more than 27 billion just last quarter alone, but most of that comes from the core product, which is Google, as, as we all know. So why do you exist? So we exist exactly because most of the money is coming in from one, you know, like, well, it's not just one product anymore, it's actually mm -hmm. a set of products. Um, and Google itself is, has a lot of R&D inside it and still constantly comes up with um, extraordinary innovations. But it's but, an advertising platform. Yeah, and at, well, they've, for instance, they're increasingly making money from enterprise, from hardware and so mm -hmm. on. But, but at the end of the day, we are a bet that the shareholders are making on being able to generate new businesses, right? So our goal is to, to make new alphabet companies that one day could be as big as Google. Now, five years ago, that was smaller <laughs> as a goal than it is today, so it's kind of getting harder. <laughs> My job's getting harder every day. Um, it's a moonshot. Yeah, definitely a moonshot. <laughs> but that's the idea, that these become autonomous you know, uh, companies that Generate, will generate um, revenue for Alphabet in the long run. And so that puts us into an interesting position when we look at new projects because our first criteria is always impact. So we will, that is part of our mission that we want to make the world a radically better place. And so that's very real. Like we've, we'll first look at um, how can we solve a real problem and how we, can have, how we can have a positive impact on the world. But then we also look at like how can we turn that into a business. Mm -hmm. I don't actually think those two are as opposed as people sometimes think. Because if you want to solve really large problems in the world, unless it's a sustainable business, it probably won't scale. So finding those things where it's, there's both profit and purpose is sort of our sweet spot. Um, I want to go to you guys for questions in, in just a minute, so be thinking of those. Um, and this time, I promise, I really will go to questions, <laughs> like yesterday. But, um, but, but real quick, um, we were talking earlier about um, Google's or Alphabet's R&D spend and that the majority of that actually goes to the Google side. Um, you guys are pretty scrappy on the, on the X side. Is, is R&D spend still a, a metric or a measure of innovation or has that shifted? So I actually think the, the early stages of innovation, so first of all, yes, I think on a whole, of course, if a company stops spending on R&D, they stop investing in their future, right? So I think looking at how much uh, spend goes onto R&D in, in total in a, in a company is a very important metric. It's sort of a question of, you know, are you just milking your existing products and businesses or are you still investing in future growth? Um, the, our R&D, however, is because it's so early stage, it's actually relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. So um, people sometimes say, well, you can only work on these moonshots because you're part of Alphabet and they have like endless money. Well, our CFO is here too. I can tell you we don't have endless money, <laughs> which, she's, which she likes to remind me of. Um, so we have milestone-based funding like many of your companies probably do, right? Like my projects start with tiny, tiny budgets and, you know, a couple of people working on them and then if they prove themselves as they make good progress, then we release more money and we, they get more headcount, which is actually sometimes the tighter currency in our company. And uh, that, I don't think, I think any company can do that. Um, at some point, of course, the spend gets bigger, but that's also often when we will partner with someone else. Okay, questions for Obi? Raise your hand and a microphone will come to you. Got one back there. Hey, Obi, how's it going? Um, so yesterday, you were one of the first people to get on the dance floor, and a bunch of people started <laughs> dancing with you. And <laughs> you're awesome, by the way. You're my dance partner for all future events. Um, so. And, and now that I know who you are, it doesn't surprise me because it seems like you're okay to be the first one to you know, probably give a crazy idea or think that way. How do you develop that mindset and that thinking? Right. Uh, yes, that's true. I'm not embarrassed to embarrass myself. Um, well, yesterday, um, someone said on stage, I think it was Whitney Wolf, she said, you know, if if people tell you your idea is crazy, then you're probably onto something. That really, really resonated with me. So this idea of being 
being different or being strange or, or standing out in some sort of awkward way, um, I think that's what you need to do in order to be a successful entrepreneur. Um, and, and also not being afraid of being rejected because people will usually tell you no, people will usually tell you it's not going to work and you have to have some sort of mixture of delusion and drive in order to make it happen. And of course, sometimes it's real delusion and then that's also important. You have to have the self-awareness of realizing like this is really a bad idea. <laughs> Question back there. Um, I'm the chief innovation officer for my own company and one of the things that we have to deal with in tech, which is very measurement driven and KPI driven and metrics driven, is how do you measure the innovation that's coming out of an innovation department. So we have metrics like the cycle rate of learning and the amount of time that's spent in asking for permission, not forgiveness. Like we've tried to put together these metrics that help make sense to the rest of the executives inside an organization that are very numbers driven. I'm wondering from your perspective, given that Google is such a data centric organization, what kind of metrics and KPIs do you guys use to say yes, moonshots are like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So um, I don't know, what, what kind of metrics do you guys use? Right, I mean there's some very traditional met metrics like financials, right? Like do the companies that we create have a, a large sizable valuation. Like they're all pre-revenue, so it's not like you can, you can look at our revenue, but you can certainly look at like the value that we create. Um, I like to think there's also some sort of brand value to Google, right? It, it's sort of a demonstration of like how innovative Alphabet still is, that they investing in these kind of, in these kind of projects, but we don't measure that directly. Um, and then there's also a sort of softer area, which is it's actually quite motivating to the people that we work on these kind of projects. So don't underestimate that either, right? Like people are really proud that we connecting Puerto Rico now. Like we got like an outpouring of emails um, internally, you know, like certainly like the whole Latino com com um, community at, um, at Alphabet was super excited. So. In, in case you didn't see it, so we just announced that we're now connecting the first 100,000 users in Puerto Rico. Um, that was actually a deal that came together incredibly quickly within weeks with AT&T, which was amazing. It probably would have taken us a year to negotiate that deal, but the hurricane devastated the entire um, infrastructure in Puerto Rico, and we were able to, to come in and help restore it. They also destroy, it also destroyed the electricity grid, and we have an energy storage project called Malta that I would love to be able to offer to them, but it's not ready yet. <laughs> That's still yeah, early. So, and, and we do need to wrap up in, uh, in just a few seconds here, but um, real quick on Malta, my understanding is that it in, involves something with molten salt. I don't really <laughs> understand any of the, the rest of it. But, um, but what is it, and I understand you're looking for... Yes, somebody. I'm looking for CEO. <laughs> so Malta is, um, you can think of it like a battery for the grid, but it's not electrochemical, it's thermal. So it's heat exchangers that... But there's salt, right? Yes, there's, okay. there's salt. two salt <laughs> tanks, one hot side and one less hot side. So when there's excess solar and wind energy, we use that electricity to heat up the, the salt, and then salt can hold its heat in a steel tank for a long, long time. So it could be like hours, it could be days, it could be weeks. And then we have a turbine on the other end to discharge it. So you can sort of think of it as like hydropower, but without the mountain. Um, and that's a project that's come out of my group um, and we just decided to actually spin that one out as an independent startup because it will give it a lot of flexibility to partner, go into China where demand for this kind of technology is very high. So I'm looking for a CEO. So if any of you would like to become CEO of a, an energy startup or know anyone, please let me know. <laughs> All right. That's on very that, real. On that note, um, thank you so much, Obi. Really thank appreciate you very much. being here.